Did you know you could push your cartograph work data to GIS for viewing, sharing, and analysis? By leveraging the built-in capability of Cartograph to integrate with the ArcGIS platform, organizations use the power of ArcGIS to interact with real-time work data in a variety of tools and formats. Whether it's a publicly accessible web map showing your current work that you're accomplishing within the city, a dashboard of key indicators to share across executives or management, or even the development of analytical tools to take a different view of your information spatially, we've got you covered. All right, so before we can start doing some cool stuff with our Cartograph work data over in ArcGIS, we need to get our Cartograph work data over to ArcGIS. So let's run through how you can accomplish that uh, through the GIS integration capabilities of OMS. I'm in the uh, GIS integration area of OMS. Uh, I'm right now in actively creating in a new association. Uh, this process is very similar to creating an association to assets as well. Uh, there's just a little bit of differences that I'll point out as we go through. Uh, so you would pick your uh, ArcGIS server or your portal or your ArcGIS online org, and then you would make sure that you have a feature service published out that has the shell uh, feature layer or feature class structure to, uh, to accommodate for tasks. Um, to get that to work, you're going to need to build at a minimum a point layer uh, that is going to contain the raw task information. So things like start date, stop date, status, and whatnot. Uh, you uh, optionally can also create a linear and a polygon uh, feature class uh, or feature layer as well uh, to house uh, the linear or polygon spatial representation of tasks uh, for things like storm basins, parks, uh, or pavement or, or water mains. Uh, that's optional, uh, but if you were looking to have that information in ArcGIS, I encourage you to create those layers as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start off. You always start off with your task point layer. That's going to bring all the task attribute data over with it. Uh, and you're going to map that to the tasks record set in Cartograph. All right. So when we do that, uh, the system knows that we're integrating work information. So it shows a little bit of a different dialogue. It's going to show us that we're doing a one-way sync. Uh, we only push work information over to ArcGIS. We never bring it back to Cartograph. So that's one big difference between the two. Uh, the other item that's available now with the work uh, integration is that you can filter down uh, the specific tasks that you want to come over from the integration. So common filters might be uh, show me nothing older than a certain date range. Maybe I'm only interested in this year's work, or maybe I'm not interested in any of my install tasks. So you can set that filter up so that when it, uh, the integration fires off, it's not going to push those tasks over to ArcGIS. Uh, it's always easier to push more information over to ArcGIS and filter down there uh, than that not have enough. So I encourage you to be uh, uh, fairly uh, cautious of over filtering uh, during your integration. If you do want to have that uh, spatial geometries for the linear and the polygons for those task types, you would check this box. Uh, mark a task linear, um, that would be your feature layer that's hosted over in the ArcGIS online platform. Uh, and you would be joining those on task ID and then for task poly as well. Uh, this is a, all documented in campus, so I encourage you to go visit this. Uh, this is uh, just kind of give you a feel for what you would need to accomplish. Another nice thing that uh, the task integration functionality gives you is uh, automatic field mapping. So if you create uh, the point layer for tasks uh, with the appropriate field structure in place that matches the task field structure, we're going to automatically do that mapping for you. Uh, one way to encourage that that actually happens is to get uh, an XML workspace document that contains the data schema uh, for the task point layer. It also has one for task linear polygon. So that essentially you can just take that, restore that to an empty geo database and be ready to go. Uh, if you're interested in getting that XML workspace doc, uh, just let our support team know, uh, and they'd be more than happy to get that over to you. Uh, in this example, I actually use the XML workspace doc to build this task linear, task poly, and this task point uh, feature layer. So I'm done at this point. My mappings are good. Uh, if I had any custom fields, I could map those as well, um, or I could even adjust the ex existing mappings. Maybe I'm not interested in bringing things like uh, you know work order information over, or zip code, or something. Uh, once you're complete, you would click save and it would perform an initial synchronization like any other GIS association. I'm not going to go through that uh, part of the exercise, but I want, I want to show uh, is what that would look like once you've got the information over to ArcGIS. 
So let's switch over to ArcGIS Online uh, and look at some samples of uh, task data in action. Uh, so in this case, uh, I essentially have, uh, you know, performed that sync. I have my task records and I'm just looking at them very simply. Uh, show me all my tasks by activity, color coded by activity. Now you can see I've got a ton of them in here. Um, there was a lot of work information that I brought over. So at this point, you may want to start to do some additional filtering, uh, narrow down by uh, activity type or, uh, you know, uh, date range, uh, whatever you feel is appropriate. Another look at this information uh, to kind of show you the power of once you get your work information over here is that you can start to do things like looking at task completion date uh, spatially uh, and also, uh, you know, see that clustered on this map. So my lighter areas are the more uh, recently completed work uh, that I've done in my area and the dark areas represent uh, the more uh, older tasks that have been completed. Uh, so it looks like that, uh, you know, recently I've been doing a lot of work in the kind of the core of my neighborhood or my city. And on the fringes, it looks like I haven't done work in a while that's older work information. So that could be particularly valuable when uh, thinking about resource allocation. And then my last example today is to show you uh, some costing information on a heat map. So if I'm interested uh, of how my uh, data is, you know, reflecting from a cost standpoint, uh, I'm able to look at this heat map and notice that I have some flare up areas from a cost standpoint uh, in this area and this area. Um, I know that if I turned off this layer that I have a park in both these areas. So it looks like right now, a lot of my costs are being related to park maintenance. And that could be interesting information that I want to dig into a little bit further. Uh, so to kind of sum up, you know, once you get your work information over to the ArcGIS platform, you have a lot of uh, capabilities at your fingertips that you can start to in interact, visualize, uh, run analysis, and even share that information out to a much larger, uh, larger audience. I fully encourage you to, uh, if you're an existing Cartograph client, to leverage integrating your work data, get it over to ArcGIS, um, start looking at that information, potentially share it out. Uh, you'll definitely see dividends.